Welcome back to another video. I'm Tad and today we're talking all about three phase power. I'm doing a commission on this condenser here and it's a three phase condenser. Behind me we have a disconnect box that feeds the power to the condenser and today I'm going to show you what happens when you have to change the phase because it's backwards. What happens to the unit, how it sounds. We're going to start this thing up right now. All right. Got the gauges hooked up. It's three phase, it's got a three pole contactor in it. And what I did first was I actually took my meter and I measured from one leg to the other. That means I measured from here to here to here. And what you're gonna notice is the voltage is gonna be different because you're gonna have a high leg coming in to this box. So I had 246, 247, 246. That's what my power was from L1 to L2 to L3, okay? So let's go ahead and close the box first because I believe in, well, somewhat safe safety. Turn the unit on. It just came on. Suction should pull down. Head pressure should be around 300. Suction pressure should be about 120. And if it's running backwards, it's gonna make a very, very loud noise. I'm gonna have to change uh, one side of the leg here. Uh, I'm gonna have to sw switch two of those out. It looks like it's not running backwards. Looks like we're actually um, properly phased here. So, suction is 125, 130. Head pressure is 275. Now we can grab our meter and hook my temperature probe up and check super eat and sub cooling if you want to know more about that check out my playlist tips for technicians also a good way to charge this is by the sub cooling charging chart so it looks like we don't have to change anything but i'm going to go ahead and show you for educational purposes uh, what happens when the phase uh, has to be changed and it's backwards so let's go ahead and switch the power here and let's turn it back on all right so all i did was switched two legs of the incoming power there now we're going to watch what the gauges do, hear what the sound is compared to before. All right. Hear that? That is me. That means that you need to switch the phase. Look at what the pressures do. Not right. This right here is what a typical unit sounds like. Pressures look like when the phase is not right. Okay. Now all I got to do is switch two wires and turn it back on. Now, before we end the video, I'm gonna take my meter and show you how I check the voltage uh, coming into the unit. We're gonna measure the amp. Before we continue on with this video, I wanna stop for just a minute and give you some more basic knowledge about three-phase power so that you're better off in the HVAC field as a technician. All right. So the first thing I want you to know is that three-phase motors are commonly dual voltage motors. Okay, that means they can be wired for a lower voltage or a higher voltage. Typically, a three-phase motor can be used with 240 or 480 volt power supply. The motor we're dealing with today is 240 volts. Three sets of windings in a three-phase motor are wired either in series for high voltage or in parallel for low voltage. Let's go up here. It says, using jumper wires in a terminal box, a technician can wire a three-phase motor in series to use 480 volt power supply or in parallel for 240 volt power supply. And three-phase motors are manufactured in either delta or Y configuration. I wanted you to see that there. Each configuration, if you don't have a book, I'll show you this book. It's a great book for learning HVAC. All right, now this is the last thing I want to show you. Also, three-phase motors are generally more efficient than single-phase motors. Three-phase motor sizes range from one horsepower and upward. That means that single-phase, it's usually one horsepower and downward, okay? So if you find a, a motor that's above one horsepower, typically it's going to be a three-phase motor. Three-phase motors don't need capacitors, okay, because... Well, I'll tell you that in just a second too, but uh, we need to stop the video if you need to, because this is a great step-by-step -step for uh, knowing how to reverse the direction of a rotation of a three-phase motor. Turn off power to the motor. To be safe, take a few readings across the motor terminals with a voltmeter to ensure that power is turned off. Disconnect any power leads from their terminals and connect each power lead to the other power leads terminals. All right, now, the last thing I wanted to tell you was about the three-phase motor. 
Three phase motor generates the necessary torque from its rotating magnetic field in the stator without requiring capacitors or start windings to create phase splitting. And that is why three phase motors don't require capacitors. All right, so this book right here is Modern Refrigeration and Air Conditioning, 20th edition. You can pick this up online, type that in right there, and you'll be able to get that book so that you can learn more. All right, we just switched two of the wires coming into the contactor, powering the condenser, the compressor. Now let's flip it back on, see what happens. Sounds smooth, no crazy noise. The pressure, as you're gonna see, the suction pressure is gonna pull down because the compressor is pumping properly the right direction. And then the uh, discharge pressure is good, exactly what uh, the charging chart says. If you would, just come take a look at this right here. Sounds good. Pressures are good. Now let's use a meter. Let's go ahead and check. And I'll show you how to check all legs of power coming in. This right here is my field piece, SC440. And uh, let's take this off so I don't have to hear that terrible noise. All right, can you see that screen right there? Can you see that screen right there? Mm -hmm. L1 to L2, 245 volts. L1, L2 to L3, 243 volts. All right, L1 to L3, 243 volts. So 244 volts. So it looks like we got 243, 244, and 245. So, looks like our voltage is pretty steady. We want to make sure it's not jumping around. We want to make sure that, you know, whether they're within a, a volt or two, that way you don't have some type of problem where you could have a wire with a, a significant voltage drop. You could have a, a wire that's not continuous all the way back to the box. You could have a junction box, and then you'd want to try to figure out where it's at and make sure that you make the right connection so that you don't have uh, of inconsistent voltages because then of course that's going to cause wear and tear on your motors so this was a video just about three-phase power you need to make sure that if it's um, needs to be switched the lines need to be switched that you know how to do that that you know how to use a meter otherwise you could be uh, really unsafe and doing something that's not supposed to be done in the field i'm tad this has been tis for technicians talking about three-phase power I'll keep you cool if you let me. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, it's very easy to hit subscribe. Hit the like button as well. And if you want more videos, check out my playlist, Tips for Technicians. Thanks for watching. You know, something I think that's really cool is the fact that the older equipment was built so durable. And they used a lot more copper with the motors and the shells were just made out of such thick metal. I want you to see the old compressor. Uh, for the old condenser and then I'm going to show you the new compressor with the new condenser uh, Before this video ends that right there is the old compressor and it's got roto locks. There's the suction and there's the discharge Look at this thing. It's humongous. I mean, this is my foot and Look at that Huge new compressor. You can't really see it, but it's super small. I mean Unbelievably small you can see that and how big that is it's not big at all unbelievable how things have changed and this one has got a micro channel coil the other one you know had the aluminum fin copper tubing so things have changed man so much look at how small that compressor is it's, it's 